here we go. So the concept of karma is present over the holiday season because of the idea that it affects those who have been naughty and nice. And a couple of years ago, karma had caught up with me, incidentally on the very same year that I was not able to afford a flight home for the holiday season and I had to spend Christmas alone. I had moved to New York City from Vancouver, British Columbia with a whopping $900 to my name which over the course of about a year and various coffee shop jobs and uh, the ebbs and flows of how finances work, I was just living off pennies. And one hopeless night, I was walking through my neighborhood of Bushwick, Brooklyn, and I got a phone call from my friend David. And he asked if I wanted to go see the movie Inception later on that evening. And I explained to him that uh, I had barely enough to get onto the subway as it was, so I would have to take a rain check. And as soon as I put away the phone, I looked down and right there on the sidewalk, is a baby's shoe. Now, usually when I see a baby's shoe on the sidewalk, I don't think anything of it. But this time, I started thinking of that scene from the movie Look Who's Talking To. <laughs> if you've never seen the movie Look Who's Talking To, it's where Bruce Willis plays a baby. And uh, John Travolta is his dad, naturally. <laughs> And there's this scene where John Travolta has a baby in a Snuggie, and he's trying to sneak into a movie. So he takes the baby's shoe off, puts it in his back pocket, and says, uh, yeah, I need to go inside the movie theater to go find the shoe that matches this one. And I thought I would do the very same thing. But I was going to do it a little bit differently. So what I did is I just held up the baby shoe and said, uh, yeah, I got to go inside the movie theater and find the one that matches this one. My baby's in the car with my girlfriend. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> And then I went and saw Inception for free. But then I became drunk with power. Because for the next week, I was just seeing every movie that I wanted to see in the theaters that year. I was like, hey, let's go see Toy Story 3. Doesn't worry, don't worry about how much it costs. I don't, I've got a baby shoe. Ha <laughs> ha. And they're like, hey, let's go see Salt with Angelina Jolie. I hear it's not very good, but it doesn't matter. Baby shoe. I was just like the mayor of New York living it up with this VIP baby shoe. <laughs> and after a week of seeing free movies, I took my lucky, trusty baby shoe and I put it in my little side satchel hipster bag. And I got onto the L train and went back to Bushwick, Brooklyn, and I got off at the Jefferson stop, and I was just feeling fantastic about my life. And as I came out of the subway station, coming up towards me down the street was about nine or ten hoodlums. And I, they looked like they were up to no good. And so I wanted to sort of avoid them. So I had to act nonchalant as I kind of turned away from them to head towards my house. But therein lies the problem, because my version of nonchalance is a very flamboyant <laughs> nonchalance. Because in my nonchalantness, to avoid these guys and not be noticed, I kind of swung around a telephone pole, <laughs> daintily, all casual-like. And I continued down the road, and of course these guys saw that, so they started walking right behind me. And things got really quiet. And I kept walking towards my house, and I could feel them right behind me, and I was like, uh-oh, this isn't good. And things were seeming okay for a moment, but then, that is the moment when I thought I died. Because I felt a pain in the back of my head. A pain that was so intense and so abrupt that I thought it was a bullet that had gone through my brain and it ended my life. But of course, that's not what happened, because I'm telling you this story today. What happened was that somebody probably hit me in the back of the head with a baseball bat or a pipe, something really, really hard, and I fell straight to the ground. These hoodlums had hit me. And as I'm falling to the ground, I'm thinking, oh my God, they're about to mug me and beat me up. But they don't need to do both of those things. They could just mug me. That's crazy, because they could have just been like, hey, could you give us all your stuff? And I would have just been, okay. Thanks for not beating me up for it. That would be a waste of energy. Yeah, no kidding. So I wanted to be like, yeah, just take whatever it is that you want. Whatever you want, just take it. But I didn't have enough time to say all those things and have that cordial conversation. So instead, as I'm falling to the ground, I just said these words. I said, just take it. <laughs> just take it. 
the most submissive thing you could possibly say to another human being. And it was like a choose your own adventure, like whatever it may be to you, just take that. So <laughs> then they kicked me in the head and the face and the brain and the legs and they grabbed my wallet, they grabbed my bag and they ran off. And as I'm getting up off the street and I'm all bloody and bruised up, I'm walking down the sidewalk and I find my wallet sitting right there on the sidewalk and I pick it up and I look through it and it's empty just like it was before. <laughs> and then I keep going up the road and I find my bag and everything is still in there. My, my, uh, my, like my book that I was reading earlier that day, my Tupperware container from lunch earlier in the park. And then I kept looking through it and I realized that they had only taken one thing. What do you think that one thing was? That's right, the baby shoe. But that is not the weird part. The weird part is not that they took the baby shoe. The weird part is that the moment I realized they had taken the baby shoe, I looked down and I realized I was standing in the exact square of pavement where I had found the baby shoe exactly a week prior. And a lot of thoughts went through my head. One of them being, what do these guys want with this baby shoe so bad? <laughs> and the second one being, what kind of genius baby <laughs> is hiring assassins <laughs> to retrieve his shoes? <laughs> and that is when I realized I had to get my act together. Because no matter how naughty it might seem to sneak into a movie with a baby shoe and how minutely naughty that might be, karma could still catch up with you the next holiday season. And this holiday season, I think that karma will be on my side. Thank you. <laughs>